All right, good morning, 6A, 6B, 6G. We're gonna continue on with our book, Because of Winn-Dixie, our read aloud. We're almost finished the book. We're gonna be doing chapters 20 and 21 today. Um, the setting of this scene takes, uh, I would say, almost exclusively in Gloria Dump's backyard, which is right there in the bottom right-hand screen here. So that's where the majority of the setting takes place. And um, some developments will happen, which will kind of move the book along, but there's not much more to this book. We're almost finished. So without further ado, we're going to be starting off our read aloud, chapter 20, because of Winn-Dixie. All right, chapter 20. When I told Gloria Demp about Otis and how he got arrested, she laughed so hard she had to grab hold of her false teeth so they wouldn't fall over her mouth. Woo-hoo! Woo-ee! She said when she finally... Uh, she said when she was finally done laughing, that sure is some dangerous criminal. He's a lonely man, I told her. He just wants to play his music for somebody. Gloria wiped her eyes with the hem of her dress. I know it's sugar, she said, but sometimes things are so sad they get, they get to be funny. You know what else I said thinking about sad things? That girl I told you about, the pinch face one, Amanda? Well, her brother drowned last year. He was only five years old, the same age as Sweetie Pie Thomas. Gloria stopped smiling. She nodded her head. I remember hearing about that, she said. I remember hearing about a little drowned boy. That's why Amanda's so pinch-faced. She misses her brother. Most likely, Gloria agreed. Do you think everybody misses somebody, like I miss my mama? Mm-hmm, said Gloria. She closed her eyes. I believe sometimes that the whole world has an aching heart. That's interesting. That's definitely a theme that runs in this book, how everyone has an aching heart. Every character seems to have this problem. I couldn't stand to think about sad things that couldn't be helped anymore. So I said, do you want to hear some more Gone with the Wind? Yes, indeed, Gloria said. I've been looking forward to it all day. Let's see what Miss Scarlet is up to now. I opened up Gone with the Wind and started to read, but the whole time I was thinking about Otis, worrying about him not being allowed to play his guitar for people. In the book, Scarlet was looking forward to going to a big barbecue where there was going to be music and food. That's how I got the idea. That's what we need to do, I said. I slammed the book shut. When Dixie's head shot up from underneath Gloria's chair, he looked around all nervous-like. Huh? Said Gloria Dump. Have a party, I told her. We need to have a party, invite Miss Fanny B Block and the preacher and Otis. And Otis can play his guitar for everyone. Sweet Pie can come too. She listens to his music good. We who? Well, we, me, and you. We can make some food and have a party right here in your yard. Mmm. We could make, said Gloria Dump, we could make peanut butter sandwiches and cut them up in triangles to make them look fancy. Lord, said Gloria Dump, I don't know if the whole world likes peanut butter as much as you and me and this dog. Okay, then I said, we could make egg salad sandwiches. Adults like those. That is true, I do like egg salad sandwiches, but I also like peanut butter. You know how to make egg salad? No, ma'am, I said, I don't have a mom around to teach me things like that, but I bet you know, I bet you you could teach me, please. Maybe, said Gloria Dump. She put her head on when Dixie said. She smiled at me. I knew she was telling me yes. Thank you, I said. I went over and hugged her and I squeezed her hard. When Dixie wagged his tail and tried to get in between the two of us, he couldn't stand being left out of anything. It's going to be the best party ever. You got to make me one prom promise, uh, though, Gloria said. All right, I told her. You got to invite them Dewey Berry boys. Dunlop and Stevie? Mm-hmm. Ain't gonna be no party unless you invite them. I have to. Yes, said Gloria Dump, you promised me. I promised, I said. I didn't like the idea, but I promised. I started inviting people right away. I asked the preacher first. Daddy, I said. Opal, the preacher said back. Daddy, me and Win dixie and Gloria Dump are having a party. Well, said the preacher, that's nice. You have a good time. Daddy, I said. I'm telling you because you're invited. Oh, said the preacher, rubbed his nose. As you can see here with the dialogue, you have to start a new paragraph. Makes it easier to read. I see, can you come? I asked him, he sighed. I don't see why not, he said. Miss Fanny Bach took to the idea right away. A party, she said, and clapped her hands together. Yes, ma'am, I told her. It will be kind of the barbecue, at, it will be kind of like the barbecue at 12 Oaks and Gone with the Wind, only it's not gonna be as many people. We're not gonna serve egg salad sandwiches instead of barbecue. That sounds lovely, Miss Franny said, and she pointed at the back of the library and whispered, maybe you should ask Amanda too. She probably won't wanna come, I said. She doesn't like me very much. 
ask her and see what she says, Miss Fanny whispered. So I walked to the back of the library and I asked Miss Amanda Wilkinson in my best manners voice to please come to my party. She looked all nervous and stuff. A party, she said. Yes, I said, I sure would like you to come. She stared at me with her mouth open. Okay, she said after a minute. I mean, yes, thank you. I'd love to come. And just like I promised Gloria, I asked the Dewey boys. I ain't going to no party at a witch's house, Stevie said. Dunlop knocked Stevie with his elbow. We'll come, he said. We will not, said Stevie. That witch might cook us up in her big old witch's pot. All right, so we have um, a metaphor here. We're comparing the witch to Miss Gloria Dump, which is not a good metaphor because she's not a witch, but nevertheless, that's what they're comparing. I don't care if you come or not, I told them. I'm just asking because I promised I would. We'll be there, said Dunlop, and he nodded at me and smiled. Sweetie Pie was very excited when I invited her. What's the theme, she asked. Well, there isn't one. You gotta think of a theme, she told me. She stuck her knuckle in her mouth and then pulled it back. It had a party without a theme. Is this dog coming, she asked. She wrapped her arms around when Dixie and squeezed him so hard his eyes almost popped out of his head. We got a little bit of a hyperbole. Uh, hyperbole is a figurative language almost like his eyes wouldn't have actually pulled out of his head. It's an exaggeration. Um, that's a hyperbole there. Yes, I told her. Good, she said. You could make that the theme. It could be a dog party. I'll think about it, I told her. The last person I asked was Otis. I told him about the party and that he was invited, and he said, no, thank you. Why not, I asked. I don't like parties, said Otis. Please, I begged. It won't be a party unless you come. I'll give you a whole free week sweeping and raging and dusting. If you come to the party, that's what I'll do. A whole week for free, Otis uh, said, looking up at me. Yes, sir, I told him. But I don't have to talk to people, right? No, sir, you don't. But bring your guitar. Maybe you can play some music. Maybe, said Otis. He looked down at his boots again real quick, trying to hide a smile. Thank you, I told him. Thank you for deciding to come. Chapter 21. After I got Otis convinced to come, the rest of getting ready for the party was easy and fun. Me and Gloria decided to have the party at night when it would be cooler. Remember, it is Florida. It's really hot during the day. And the afternoon before, we worked in Gloria's kitchen and made egg salad sandwiches. We cut them up in triangles and cut off the crust and put little toothpicks with frilly tops in them. When Dixie sat in the kitchen and looked at us the whole time, he kept on wagging his tail. The dog thinks we're making these sandwiches for him, said Gloria Dump. When Dixie showed Gloria all his teeth. These ain't for you, she told him. But when she thought I wasn't looking, she gave when Dixie an egg salad sandwich without the toothpick. We also made punch. We mixed together orange juice and grapefruit juice and soda in a big bowl. Glory called it dump punch. She said she was world famous for it, but I had never heard it before. The last thing we did was we decorated the yard all up. I strung pink and orange and yellow crepe paper in the trees to make it look fancy. We also filled up paper bags with sand and put candles in them. And right before it was time for the party to start, I went around and lit all the candles. It turned Gloria Dump's yard into a fairyland. Mm-hmm, said Gloria Dump, looking around. Even somebody with bad eyes could tell it looks good. It did look pretty. It looked so pretty that it made my heart feel funny, all swollen and full. And I wished desperately that I knew where my mama was so she could come to the party too. Miss Franny Block was the first to arrive. She was wearing a pretty green dress that was all shiny and shimmery. And she had shiny and shimmery. That's alliteration there, consonant blend to make it sound. Um, I don't know, that makes the words flow a bit. And she had on the high heeled shoes that made her wobble back and forth when she walked. Even when she was standing still, she kind of swayed like she was standing on a boat. There we go, like she was standing on a boat. There's a simile there. It's comparing her walk uh, to the movements of a boat. She was carrying a big glass bowl of litmus lozenges. I bought a little after dinner treat, she said, handing the bowl to me. Thank you, I said. I put the bowl on the table next to the egg salad sandwiches and the punch. Then I introduced Miss Franny to Gloria and they shook hands and said polite things to each other. And then Sweetie Pie's mother came by with Sweetie Pie. Sweetie Pie had a whole handful of pictures of dogs that she had cut out of a magazine. It's to help you with your theme, she said. You can use them to decorate. I brought them tape too. And she started going around taping the pictures of dogs to the trees and the chairs and the table. She ain't talk about nothing but this party all day long, said her mother. Can you walk her home? when it's over. I promised that I would and I introduced Sweetie Pie to Miss Franny and to Gloria and right after that the preacher showed up. He was wearing a coat and tie and looked real serious. 
he shook Gloria Dumb's hand and Miss Franny Block's hand and said how he was pleased he was to meet them both and how he heard of nothing but good things about both of them. He patted Sweetie Pie on the head and said it was good to see her outside of church. And the whole time when Dixie was standing right in the middle of everyone, wagging his tail so hard that I thought for sure he would knock Miss Franny right off her high heels. Amanda Wilkinson came and she had her blonde hair all curled up and she looked shy and not as mean as usual. And I stood real close to her and introduced her to Gloria Dump. I was surprised at how glad I was to see Amanda. And I wanted to tell her that I knew about Carson. I wanted to tell her I understood about losing people, but I didn't say anything. I was just extra nice. We were all standing around at one another and acting kind of nervous when a real screechy voice said, Gertrude is a pretty bird. When Dixie's ears went straight up on his head and he barked once and looked around. I looked too, but I didn't see Gertrude or Otis. I'll be right back, I said to everyone. Me and when Dixie went running around to the front of the house and sure enough, standing there on the side of the oat was Otis. He had had his guitar on his back and Gertrude on his shoulder and in his hands, he was holding the biggest jar of pickles I had ever seen in my life. Otis, I said to him, come on around back. That's where the party is. Oh, he said, but he didn't move. He just stood there holding on to his jar of pickles. Dog, screeched Gertrude. She flew off Otis's shoulder and landed on Winn-Dixie's head. It's all right, Otis, I told him. It's just a few people, hardly any people at all. Oh, said Otis again. He looked around like he was lost. Then he held the jar of pickles. I brought pickles, he said. I saw them, I said. It's exactly what we needed. They will go perfect with the egg salad sandwiches. I talked to him real soft and gentle low, like he was a wild animal. There's a simile there. She's comparing um, Otis to a wild animal that she was trying to get food out of the hand. So she's kind of coaxing him to get uh, inside and she's comparing that to when people feed animals, they try to coax them by giving them food. He took one tiny step forward. Come on, I whispered. I started walking and when Dixie followed me and when I turned around, I saw Otis was following me too. And that brings us to chapter 22 and enough for today. So, so a couple of reflections that we have. Uh, again, the main setting takes place in Gloria Dump's um, house and backyard area. There were some scenes where uh, Gloria Dump went over to invite uh, her father um, Fanny Block and everyone else to the party. So she was probably all over Naomi doing so. Um, so that's where the setting is mainly in the backyard of Gloria Dump's um, uh, property. We also, in terms of uh, characters, m there's no new characters. Um, we, we get to see a little bit of the, the Newberry boys, or what's it, the Newberry Dunlop boys, um, Stevie and uh, Dunlop, I think is that, but yeah, the Dewberry boys, Stevie and Dunlop. And, um, we see that maybe Stevie likes, um, Opal maybe has a crush on her, but, uh, he definitely is interested in going to this party and, uh, do, uh, Stevie Dunlop's not really, but, um, or no, Dunlop seems to be the one that might have a crush on her. And, uh, Stevie's the one that's still teasing, uh, Gloria about being a witch uh, but nonetheless they're coming to the party as well and um but everyone else we've met in in the um, book fanny block uh the preacher when dixie otis um all the characters at this point in the book are established there, there seem to be no new characters that will be introduced um however in terms of character we we do see a little bit of um Dunlop coming out. Uh, he's a little bit more assertive than Stevie um, and he really wants to make a connection with um, Opal. We see a family block uh, dressing up and beginning to live her life um, and be more expressive instead of lonely and she comes in with this you know beautiful dress. Um, we still see the preacher as being very turtle-like um, where he is you know still guarded um, and then we begin to see Amanda Wilkinson, who has lost her brother, Carson, um, you know, as more shy and not snobby, as we were led to believe with Opal's first um, analysis of her character. In terms of the plot, not, not much happens, really. It's, it's about um, uh, Opal inviting a bunch of people or getting an idea um, from Gone with the Wind about a party and inviting a bunch of townspeople to come together um 
to Gloria Dump's backyard so that everyone can, I don't know, share and uh, um, commerce, commerserate um, or just become friends, you know, just a good gathering of friends and eating sandwiches and to socialize and to get to know each other and uh, get over loneliness. And um, that's what Opal wants to do. She wants to bring together the whole theme. Uh, one of the themes in the books that does uh, come up is that theme of loneliness that seems to be uh, imbued with each and every character that we see in the book. You know, Dunlop and Stevie, at least Dunlop is lonely because he wants to, I don't know, be Opal's friend. When Dixie was lonely at the beginning of the book, didn't have an owner, was going to be taken to the pound. Opal doesn't have her mom. The preacher doesn't have his wife. Fanny Block, all of her relatives and friends are dead. She has no one. Gloria Dump is a loner or a recluse almost. She's got no friends. Otis has absolutely no friends. He was in jail. He's very shy. Um, so Opal's bringing them all together under this party and we'll, we'll take it, we'll end it there and uh, see what happens uh, during the party and see if there's any uh, plot that changes. Right now they're developing or leading up to, um, I would say the climax of the book. You know, most of the book kind of just goes like this and then it'll eventually go up to a climax and we'll talk a little bit about um plot diagrams a little bit later anyway uh thanks for joining me i hope you guys and girls have a wonderful weekend we have an upcoming kahoot live um comprehension uh kahoot live challenge i might do it between all the classes 6a 6b and 6g at the same time or i might do it separately uh leave comments below in the the hub feed and, and give me some ideas if you want to do just a separate uh kahoot um, or do you want to do it combined with the classes? Anyway, guys and girls, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. No discussion question. Enjoy the nice weather, and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. All right, guys? See you later.